Go! Today in this video, I will be making a device that is going to blow your minds. So starting with the first component, which is the solenoid that I found in the scrap market. And right now I'm figuring out its operating power. Yeah, this was strong. Ah. Oh man, now this is really strong. Now it is not coming out. Ah. Oh, you see the entire spring is moving upwards. It is not coming out. This should do the job well. <sighs> now, this is my 32 volts, 600 milliampere's uh, printer power supply lying around discarded, and I want to utilize it somewhere. Now, I know that the voltage I decided was 24 volts DC, and this one is a little higher, but uh, I'm going to go with this one. So, the power supply from the printer is on, and let's place it like this. Let's keep it connected and then try to pull it. <sighs> oh. Yeah, the wire came out otherwise it was not going to come out really strong and this is going to handle the 32 volts without doubt Now, the modification that I have done to this solenoid has uh, resulted into something funny, okay? <laughs> Next, what I'm going to need is a carbon brush, a simple wire, one of these pieces from old and discarded home sockets, or discarded metal piece. That's it. Let's assemble them all together. Look guys what I've got from the scrap market this time. A super high capacity and powerful capacitor bank. Very rare. See? The bus bar is missing here. Now these capacitors can also be high voltage so gloves are necessary and avoid touching these terminals and always do the voltage check, check if they are charged or not. 85 millivolts, discharged, 78, 83, yeah they are discharged. Oh, oh the bolt broke. Let's check their capacity. Super excited. It is 3300 microfarad and 450 volts DC. That is huge. Since all of these were connected in parallel, then obviously all of them have the same rating. So here I'm gonna charge it to 60 volts with an e-bike charger, just for testing purposes. Oh. Try this one. Okay, next. Testing time, first capacitor. Wow. Second. Oh, the great news is that all of these are working perfectly fine. Uh, we have to discharge these completely. Okay.
Next, I'm going to use this case to attach this solenoid like this. It's a mess all around here. I will have to clean all this up before I can move on further. So here I'm going to stick uh, the printer power supply with double sided tape on this thing. Next moving this output cable from this side to the other side. Here it is. Next I will be taking these two wires for power supply connection. Here this one has longer wire insulation removed because I'm planning on connecting it here. Next, I'm going to use this 6 amperes diode with the gray side, meaning the negative will be connected to the positive. Done. Next, this is a 50 volts, 5000 microfarad capacitor. And here as you can see that I have stripped the wires, the output wires of this printer power supply. And I'm going to connect this capacitor. Make sure of the polarity always. And also check if uh, the capacitor is discharged or not. And now that this much part is completed, let's do a little testing before proceeding any further. So these are the output wires from the printer supply. Here I've placed a red sleeving on one wire to indicate that it is positive terminal. And accordingly, we will have to connect it to this solenoid. Finally, this positive terminal remains from the supply and positive terminal from the solenoid. Okay, so I've connected this wire to the power supply temporarily, turning it on. And let's try and connect this wire and see what happens. You see, it is working. Finally, I've made this simple bulb holder. And this is a 220 volts, 60 watts bulb. Next, I'm going to use this double-sided tape to stick this bulb as shown. So here I'm going to connect the pinouts to the input of the printer power supply. Here the printer input wires are extended to the inside with one wire connected to one terminal of the capacitor while the other wire has come out over here. Finally soldering this green wire to this point of the bulb. Next I'm going to use this small wire with one terminal connected to the positive of the diode and the other to the bulb. I also had to make these connectors two sets. Now the blue wires will be connected together while the red ones will remain disconnected. Now the input wires of the printer are stripped. So the blue wire will be connected to this point. Next the red wire of the smaller connector will be connected to this point. Now these two sets are a complete look alike but they have a very different function. This set is for feeding power to this entire machine while this set is for measuring the voltage of this capacitor bank. Next I'm going to install this multimeter to this machine. Here I've placed this double sided tape. After that this is the negative for the capacitor voltage reading and this is the positive. Next comes this a few meters long old and discarded broadband cable. This one is not fiber, it is copper one. Next comes this push switch that I have to add. I'm going to use this syringe that I have cut from the sides and a plastic piece. It is from some machine used as a base. After connecting the plastic piece, let's place the old broadband wire like this. And finally, it is time to connect the switch. Placing the switch inside the other end of the syringe. Here I've placed some black tape and this is how it looks. Finally, this is my 220 volts cable. Let's connect it to the mains. Pointing the meter at uh, 1000 volts. Now, instead of the carbon brush, here I've placed this simple screw. So guys, finally I'm going to charge it at full power and then detonate it. Okay, go. Oh. 
what is happening this is dangerous let's stop it and go <laughs> that was so cool so guys now i'm going to test it at full potential so let's start the charging the bulb will start glowing and here uh, the voltage is rising actually i don't get it why there is so much spark <laughs> you, you see it is, it is very dangerous why that is happening i don't under, understand okay and oh go oh charging once again <laughs> it is so cool and why is that happening i don't get it okay and go oh <laughs> you see it is so cool okay oh. <laughs> once again we are reaching as high as 250 volts and go oh full charge <laughs> something that you have never seen before on youtube oh the voltage is going much beyond 250 volts uh, i think we are going to reach around 300 volts dc oh 300 and oh! <laughs> wow it is so cool charging reaching really close to 300 once again and go whoa <laughs> it's like a cracker that is never going to finish uh, let's turn off the lights and then enjoy this part Okay, let's stop it now and go. Let's turn the charging on. Okay. Okay, whoa. The fish man. Yeah, this is really scary because it is unpredictable. And I believe that I have this uh, button with which I'm going to explode it. And it explodes on its own. So that is why it's so scary and the voltage has crossed beyond 300. Okay. Oh, so many sparks. Okay. You see? <laughs> it explodes without, without reason. And I don't get it. If you people have any idea, then please let me know in the comment section. 250 volts. And go. Oh, man. <laughs> right. Okay, so this is the... Yeah, what, what is this, man? Totally unpredictable. Turning it off. Let's see the max it can do. I'm, I'm not going to uh, like uh, short circuit it until it reaches its maximum value and stabilizes at it. Uh, like 340 volts. That is the max that we are getting here. Uh, that is because of the peak voltage. So the maximum that I can do here is 300, 336, 38, it is still increasing. 340 volts AC, sorry, DC, not AC. And this is the highest that I'm doing here. Go! <laughs> oh! So unpredictable. Now, obviously, this goes without saying that uh, please do not make it at home. Oh! So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like uh, button and share it with your friends. Uh, see you in the next cool video. Bye-bye.